In this video, we're going to take a look at Session View and Arrangement View in Ableton Live. Ableton Live's different views should be thought of as being completely separate from one another. Although they both hold clips, they do it in completely different ways. This environment we're in now is called the Session View. This view allows us to launch and stop clips in real time, and to improvise and jam with our different clips, tracks and scenes. This second view is called the Arrangement View. This is similar to most other DAWs, with its linear timeline view. To get from Session View to Arrangement View and vice versa, we can use these two icons at the top right of the page, or by using the tab shortcut. Each view is unique in how we work with them. Many musicians use Session View for DJ sets and live shows, but ultimately, if you wish to export a track, then you're going to need to build it in Arrangement View, so you can structure it with regards to time. Clips exist in both views. Here we have clips in Session View, and if we go to Arrangement View, here we also have clips in Arrange View. It's important that you notice that the clips in one view can be completely different to the clips in another view. This will become confusing unless you stay on top of your clip renaming when you're editing clips. Just because one view contains certain clips, this doesn't mean the other view is going to contain these same clips as well. Also, deleting clips from one view won't delete them from the other view. The golden rule to learn here is that these two views are separate entities altogether. The only things these have in common is the tracks and the mixer. When dragging clips, we can press tab to drag a clip into the opposite view and vice versa. Once again, I'm going to reiterate, if we make any changes to clips in one view, they're not going to change the clips in the other view. This counts right down to the information stored in the individual clips themselves. These two views are completely separate from each other, and it's important you understand this concept before we move on. Pressing tab or clicking the different view buttons will flick between these two views only. This won't alter the playback or any settings in live whatsoever, it's just a change between the two views. Mixer functions are completely universal to both session view and arrangement view, so if you solo, mute or change the volume or send settings, this will affect both of the views. Another method of getting the clips into arrangement view from session view is by using the arrangement record button at the top of the screen in the transport bar. If we press tab during recording, we can see this getting recorded into the timeline live. We can also see this by the red tin in the arrange view. This is really useful for improvising and really quickly getting down a rough arrangement instead of having to drag loads of clips in from session view. Many producers prefer this musical feel of working with scenes in session view as opposed to click dragging in. Once we've perfected our track in arrangement view, we can then select this arrangement and we can use the tab key to drag it back into the session view if we wish. From here, it can be converted back into scenes. This method is recommended for producers that have finished tracks in the arrangement and they want to play these tracks out using Ableton in Session View. A point to note from earlier is that you can only play one clip back at a time in any one given track. So if we have differing clips in Session View and Arrangement View, then we need to have a button to decide whether to play the Session View version or the Arrangement View version, or a mix and match of both. You may notice in Arrangement View, when we hear something that we can't see, or vice versa, that the screen or certain tracks in the arrangement display will be blurred out. This, coupled with the Back to Arrangement button being illuminated, tells us that one or more clips are playing from Session View rather than Arrangement View. When we click the Back to Arrangement button, we can see that the light goes out and that the screen is no longer greyed out, so we're back to the arrangement. This now means that we're going to hear exactly what we're seeing. Notice that pressing this Back to Arrangement button will also stop all of the clips playing in Session View. What we can now do is play the Arrangement View from the start. Whilst this is playing, we can improvise and try bringing different parts in and out using the clips in Session View. By launching these certain tracks clips in Session View, we'll be overriding the arrangement for that track only. Once again, if we go to the Arrangement View, we can either press Back to Arrangement for the whole arrangement, or we can do this on an individual track basis by pressing the greyed out play buttons next to the track buttons. This arrangement and session view concept can be very confusing to someone new in Ableton Live. So to summarise, we have clips that can be in both session and arrangement view. Just because a clip's in one view doesn't mean it's going to exist in the other. These views are completely separate entities. So even if I delete all of the clips in a view, for instance session view, then arrangement view is still going to be untouched and vice versa. Also, if I was to edit any of the clips in Arrangement View, it will not update the clips that are in Session View. They'll remain the same as before. 
we can drag and drop edited clips back and forth from session to arrangement view. Also remember, the mixer is universal to both of the views, so changes made to the mixer will happen in both session and arrangement view. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the mixer in Ableton Live.